Steve Eskenazi, world record holder. Congratulations, highest aggregate score in three consecutive list eight innings. Uh, the stats continue to tumble for you, another extraordinary effort. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that out there at all. Um, it was quite funny, Jono, uh, Richard Johnson, the head coach in the bar yesterday, said something like, I don't know if anyone's gone three in a row for Middlesex or something. And I sort of laughed it off, just thinking I'll try and get through my first ball first. Um, but really pleasing to sit here at the end of another fantastic game to bounce back from a tough defeat against Leicester in the first game to be sitting somewhere near the top of the table now is a really proud feeling. It's extraordinary really, I mean say defeat in that first game, Middlesex, that was their sixth highest list day score at the time and, and defeated. It's been 350 there or thereabouts every single game so far. What, what an amazing run obviously with a huge rate of runs from yourself. Yeah, the game certainly moved on. Um, I think across the board, test cricket, one day cricket, domestically, four day cricket, um, the attitude towards these games are that it's going to be taking it on from ball one and, and I sort of challenged the group at the start of the competition to go with that, to move with that, to try and you know not look at our records and statistics from bygone years and, and see if we can build on those for you know, 10 or 15% more and I think everyone's challenged themselves. Someone like a Sam Robson with the consistency he has in Red Bull cricket to come out and play the way he did today is um, a huge credit to his adaptability. It's an incredible team that Middlesex have at the moment, obviously five missing for the 100, Blake Cullen's injured at the moment, but even so, it's, it's a pretty strong side, isn't it? Do you feel like there's more to come from this side as well? Because obviously you're putting forward a, a great number of runs, there's always somebody puts their hand up at the moment, it's you, but the team as a whole, it feels like there's even more to come from it. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look at guys like Joe Cracknell, Luke Holman and Max Holden, um, you're not going to keep quality players, quality young players are that quiet for too long. So, you know, it's tough for those guys coming in the situations they are having to get on with it straight away on, on club wickets like this. So it's, it's fantastically sort of selfless cricket from them. But no doubt they're going to come through the next couple of games too. And then, as I said, you know, we're, we're looking to push boundaries personally um, and certainly looking to push boundaries collectively and try and push that 400 mark with that. And a word for Tony Greatwood as well, you know, talking about the youngsters with the ball as well. They did it today and he picked up the man who's just behind you doing an interview at the moment for me, um, which was a crucial wicket and a crucial time. He obviously got the nod over Ethan today, perhaps a bit of rotation, but that was a huge wicket for him. Yeah, absolutely. The bounce back ability of the youngsters is, is incredible. And I think, you know, just as we're looking to push our boundaries with the bat, um, opposition sides are looking to do exactly the same. If you look the way Budden just started there, you know, whacking our overseas test superstar everywhere too, you know. These sides are coming out for us as well, just as we are to them. So it's, a, it's an immense challenge for these young bowlers in particular. Um, you have to learn quickly, learn on the job. But I'm really proud of the way they bounce back and, and to put three runs on the board with such a young bowling attack is going to fill the, fill the group with confidence. What did you put your own form down to? Um, I mean, I think I jinxed you about four years back and said to Dark Horse for England this season. But the last, you know, careers will go in roller coasters, right? There'll be peaks and troughs. The, the last three years have just built and built and built. Especially yeah. in white ball. Yeah, really proud of my consistency in this format. Um, I think it sort of suits my game, batting at the top of the order, and in, in particularly 50 over cricket. I'm not a big risk taker, hitting the ball over the top, hitting along the ground. Um, you know, I like to hit my strongest shots, and when there's two slips and a lot of gaps, I guess it works quite well for me. And I don't know, I think from a motivation perspective, I've been overlooked in the 100 for a couple of years now. Um, Having been the leading run scorer in the blast for three years with no one scoring more runs than striking at 145. So, yeah, you know, I'm not usually one to delve into that side of my personality or characteristics, but. Um, but it's driven you at the moment. Yeah, I've certainly got a point to prove, and, you know, if it results in Middlesex wins and. and the fact that I can put my hand up is really pleasing as well. You've got the big bash tweeting about you as well. Any clubs need to play for next year? That must feel pretty good. I don't know what they're going to tweet today after this one. Yeah, look, I think as I've gotten older, I've decided to realise you can only control what you can control, and that's the white cricket ball coming down to you, whether it's a Grantham, whether it's a Radler, whether it's a Thompson, or whether it's the MCG. You know, I'm out there facing a ball and I'm trying to do my best so you know that can be added motivation it can be added fuel but um, when you're out there you need to have a clear game plan and fundamentally you need to keep enjoying your cricket because there are people a hell of a lot less fortunate than us. Middlesex move top of the group we've got Somerset next at Taunton who are bottom uh, and then two home games against the side second and third it's a really a good opportunity to do something I know it's something that the players are, are desperate to do well in the one day cup as they were last year as well. Yeah massive I think sold out down to Taunton so the atmosphere there is going to be incredible. Um, yeah, we just take momentum in this competition. We saw, I guess, the flip side of it in the 2020s when we 
we got on the wrong side of it, how difficult it was to claw it back. So we're not taking it for granted at all. We know any side on their day, particularly at home, can play fantastic cricket and turn us over. So we're going to have to you know, rest and recover extremely well tomorrow. Um, no, no winner's beers or record holder's beers, unfortunately. It's get on that bus, regroup, get our heads on, and we can go back from this road trip with another win and set us up beautifully. It's a massive week, isn't it? It could be a huge week for the season. It sets up nicely as well going into September. Come what may once this competition's a knockout, if Middlesex can make it that far. Absolutely. I think what the last couple of years has shown us in the Middlesex dressing room after the successes of 2015 and 16 is that you know, playing well, um, doing well in competitions is extremely difficult. So we're not taking it for granted whatsoever. We know there's work to be done. Um, we do sit back and reflect and enjoy each other's um, success and performances, but we know it's not a God-given right to go down to a side who's bottom when you're near the top and, and do well. So we've been on that side of it. We know how hungry every team in this competition is, so yeah, we've got to keep going. And a uh, final thought on yourself. Four from four, Kumar Sangakara has done it. There's, a, I think, three or four on that list that have over the years. Sangakara is the big name. Easier said than done. It's a, it's a ridiculous stat. It's ridiculous that you've done three from three, but obviously there's a little bit of excitement with what, you, what you're doing at the moment. Yeah. And to do it at Taunton well, as well. I think we were joking around, you know, coming from these club grounds, going to Taunton, notoriously <laughs> the best wicket in the country. I'll probably get jacked off first or something <laughs> down there. But I think that's the beauty of, of the game. It's going into each game with no real expectation on yourself, going in knowing that your game plan works. Um, and just trying your best to, I guess, stick to that as long as possible. And this was done on club grounds against, well, today, Hutton, Patterson, um, done it against Durham and Rushworth, you know, a club ground at, at Radlett the other day. So these have been serious runs, and the Royal London's been a, a serious competition so far. Middlesex makes work really hard for these victories. Yeah, and that Leicester game as well. The standard's well. been really high, and as I said, I think the challenge for all the young players in this competition is to make sure that when the big guns come back, if their side makes the knockout stages, that they keep their spot. So you can see, you look at the way someone like Fateh Singh played there, I thought he bowled beautifully and he batted incredibly. That's you know as good as anyone in the country is going to play against us. So you know, no one's coming to these grounds thinking that they're going to just bash 140 and move on and take five for 20. You know, it's incredibly difficult and it's a fantastic player. So the stand has been brilliant. The games have been fiercely contested. I think County Cricket's alive and well. Incredible effort, huge congratulations. Thanks. Thank you.